Hello to this video about creating a stone in 3ds Max with procedural maps. My name is Sacha Henrichs. You will now learn how to use the displace modifier in 3ds Max with a procedural cellular map in order to make a box look like a stone. The stone itself will be some kind of granite or sandstone, which are also used for refer reference in my previous mud box tutorials. The final product using this technique should then look like this. This tutorial comes in two parts. The second part actually covers mapping and texturing techniques for the high poly object. So first we need a sphere, but we don't use one of the default sphere primitives, we use a box. Create a box with two cubic meter meters and five segments for all sides and then apply a sphere modifier. The reason we use a box instead of the default sphere is because we want the whole geometry to be out of quads, for that the coming deformations won't create any artifacts in the structure. If you see the normal 3D at max sphere, you'll recognize poles on it where the polys collapse to only one point creating a bunch of triangles there, and uh, the geosphere object is completely made out, out of triangles. Okay done this, also apply a turbo smooth modifier on it there and then then use five iterations that's okay for now. Then apply a displace modifier. This first displace will give us a basic shape for our stone. Scroll down a bit until you see the image field and click the None button under the Map Entry. This will open the Material Map Browser. In this browser search for the Cellular Map and double-click it. Done this, open the Material Editor and drag and drop the material as an instance into one unused slot. For this tutorial I prepared the maps and the values are size 110, spread 1.5. The mid threshold is 0.8 and the upper division color is RGB 158 and the lower division color is RGB 112. To get good values I had to play around with the settings and so should you in order to understand how the single values behave. In fact you might only understand the settings of a procedural map when you see its results because the results are always unit and scene scale dependent. A smaller stone would need other settings than this uh, big boulder. Okay, set this, switch over to the modifier again. Then uh, set the strength value to 1.3 meters and the mapping to spherical. Then apply another displace modifier for the medium details but now we don't use a cellular map but a noise map. The medium details of a boulder might be some deeper cracks or in this case chipped plates of stone like you see in this reference. So search for the noise map, double click it and drag and drop it into the material editor. I also prepared this map before and the settings are size 100, noise type fractal, noise threshold high is 0.9, low is 0.2 and the levels are 10. You can double click the map preview and resize the upcoming window for a bigger preview. But in order to get your map look like this you have to open the output rollout in the material settings. There you can set uh, the output settings for the different grayscale values. Try and play around with these settings, it's pretty much self-explaining. Add points with the third icon from the left right above the curve and move the points with the move icon above. You can see its results in the map preview then. Lighter colors will push the vertices away from your existing geometry and uh, darker values will do nothing. See how you can modify the fall off between the contrast with the output curve. Then set the displacement strength to 0.06 and the mapping to spherical. 
That was for the basic and medium details. Now we also need some grainy surface. But before I want to change the color of the object to gray, changing only the object color won't get us rid of the high specular effects. So I use a default gray material and assign it to the stone. Concerning the grainy details I could also use the displace modifier with a noise map inside, but in this case I use the standard noise modifier. Which is okay, but in some cases could produce some aliasing artifacts inside the displacements. I assume the displacement of the noise modifier is based on a 16-bit source instead of a 32-bit, which you achieve by using a noise map instead of the, m the modifier. The settings for the noise modifier are scale 270, fractal on and strength is 0.3 in all axes. Now we got some medium noises, but we even apply another noise modifier for some high frequent and detailed noise. The settings for this one are size 100, fractal on and 10 iterations and the strength is 0.1 in all axes. Here uh, see the difference when I turn the modifier on and off. Done this, I want to flatten the stone a bit. You can just scale it in the z-axis, but I want to use the FFD modifier for this. Using this modifier, your modification will be more customizable, since you can also only move single points of the freeform cage to give it some skew into any direction. So choose the first FFD cage with only 8 control points, fold out the small plus icon to open the sub-objects and switch to the control points. Select the 4 control vertices on the top and then drag them down. Now when we zoom in a bit we see that there is lack of graininess on the surface in the close-up. That's because our object has not enough geometry detail. So we click on the Turbo Smooth modifier again and give it one more iteration. To get a better preview of your stone you can alter its material and make the ambient color black to get more contrast and then give it also some specular. You can do this to better estimate the topology of your object. So now the modeling part is completely done and you can change the entire result only by changing the mapping offset and the cellular map of the first displacement modifier making this whole rig extremely variable. In the next video you will see how we give this stone a UV map and paint it in mud box for full use in CG films as a hero object. And in the very last video I'll explain how we create a game ready asset from the stone to be used in games. So stay tuned and visit my blog at saschahenrichs.blogspot.com. Bye.